once our JDN set of things are done and we are ready to connect our motherboard to TV these are the settings, switch settings for our cooler so make sure this switch is set to normal now and since we are doing Corona version 1 this, so this is set to slim alright here we have our uh, simply placed our motherboard back into the chases we have connected our module power supply, AV cable and the Ethernet cable uh, a cool and a red light is on so it's all good so we're simply going to turn it on and see if this glitch timing file is any better than the others so the console turns on so the cool runner doesn't even attempt to glitch there is no green line so this setting is no good I'm going to simply turn it off alright test number so in this test we'll try it setting number two on and five on S4 all off. Alright, this has pretty much taken 40 minutes and there is no boot. So what are we going to do? We're going to leave this setting and we're going to try another one. Uh, we, f we flashed the very first timing file. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to flash a different timing file to the console and try again with these settings, switch 2 and 5 on. Once again, these are our connection setups, power supply, AV cable, Nandex, connected to Nandex, cables, cool runner cable, and important thing is we're going to flash a different timing file this time, so make sure your switch is set to program again. So I'm just simply going to connect our Nandex to a PC USB port, alright, and then we're going to use uh, JRunner's cool runner. Uh, flashing uh, utility and flash a different time file. Alright, our first attempt uh, has, been, has been pretty much failed and it literally took 40 minutes and there was no Zell boot up. So what are we going to do? Uh, we're going to try out a different timing file so click on flash cool runner and this time try. we're going to try out 2-2. Two, two. We already tried 0-2 so we're going to try 2-2 two, two. Make sure your cooler switch is set to program before doing this and flash it. Okay, once all flashed, we are presented with this message. So we have a different timing file now, so let's try it out with this file. Once again, uh, once you have flashed a different timing file, make sure your switch is set to normal. And let's just connect our uh, motherboard to our TV. Okay, we are here again uh, with the new timing file, so let's just try it out and see if this is any better than the previous one. So I'm just going to turn our console on. Alright, once again, another few minutes and there is no <laughs> uh, luck here, so I'm going to turn it off and change the setting to switch 1 and 5 and use the same timing file. Once again, there is no luck with this method either. So what we'll do, we'll try a different timing file and different settings. Alright, after trying a number of settings, different glitch files, different switch settings, the console still didn't glitch, that's okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to change the CPU reset cable. We're going to still, in the testing phase, so we are just tweaking out what's the best uh, setting for our console. So what we'll do, we'll just a long blue CPU reset cable. There's another alternate point, FT3T10, that's here. 
So we'll desolder this from here and place it on here. And we'll try one more time. If that fails, we'll just take out the X clamp and try at that point. We'll try uh, pretty much all the possible files uh, and try to glitch this console. Alright, uh, let's just take this blue wire off and solder it onto FT3T10. So that's the point FT3T10. So let's solder it onto this point. That flux pre tinted. Let's see if it glitch or if there is any improvements.